God bless. God bless you guys. And welcome to Street Fishing YouTube channel. And we are here to do a very first episode of the Street Fishing Podcast. Um, you know, we might come up with a name later on, but we're here, first episode, and let's see how this goes. <laughs> so don't mind if we mess up. <laughs> this is the first time, so first time ever doing this, first time, you know, and of course there's gonna be mistakes, so but stay tuned. Continue. If you have if you're not subscribed, subscribe to the channel. I guarantee you're gonna be blessed by we're gonna uh what we're gonna have on here. But for the first episode to kick it off, we got Brother Marcelo. Hey man, man, how you guys doing? Yeah, man. Thank you for for coming on, for being in a way kind of like my test subject. <laughs> but good. yeah, man. It, and so yeah, so let's start it off pretty much um a little bit of your background. Um so were you always Christian or were you born into a Christian family or you later came on to become Christian? Uh, I was I was raised Catholic. It was mainly more tradition. My grandma, because her her grandma, just the traditions that came forth like that. Um, I was baptized as a child. I did my first communion. I mean, my catechism. Then I got into my, my confirmation, my first communion and confirmation. And um, yeah, man, I, I still didn't have an encounter with God, never felt the presence of God. Even then, I really didn't know too much about God, yeah. who he was, more than just a man that came, they say, as a man that came and died for me. I didn't know any more deeper than that. Yeah, so so was your family like like a hardcore Catholic or like, you know, them tired, like where you just go Sundays and, you know, or holiday stuff? Yeah, it was mainly like this. I had some family members that that were really hardcore, mm -hmm. and like my parents, not really as much. It was just more as because uh, my my parents went, so let's go. Mm -hmm. and really, we went on the holidays. Yeah, because I think I think a lot of times that we come across people, especially you know, like when we evangelize, a lot of the Catholics that are like, they'll they'll say they're Catholics and they go to church, but then like know nothing about the Bible. Like basically, all they know is just like your basic. Jesus died, and we believe in God. Like, but everything else is like they don't got no type of doctrine, no type of um, you know, no don't even know scripture and stuff like that. So your family, like you said, a little bit of both. Yeah, man. man how my mom and my parents were. It was just it was no doctrine. It was just hey, cause my parents went. You know, listen, we should do yeah, like tradition. Should, yeah, yeah. And I think most of the time, that's where. A, a Catholic, a lot of Catholics, not just Catholics, because there's a lot of Christians that are like born into it and pretty much just follow it because it, they, it's become a tradition. Right, it's become routine and it's something that their family did. So then they kind of continue on. Um, so I guess a little bit, you know, still coming into your background. Um, you know, how was your childhood? Like you had a good childhood. My childhood growing up, man, my, my mom was young. I had a young parents. My mom was 16 when she had me. Oh, wow. And, um, yeah, my, my dad, my biological dad, he wasn't there for me. And my stepdad that raised me up was there for me. So my step, my, my dad would try to come back into my life when I was a little kid, like four years old. He'd always tell me, be ready, and I would always be ready. And, man, it just, he wouldn't come through and come and, get, come and pick me up. And uh -huh. at that age, I felt like, man, like, man, well, how come he doesn't want me? Yeah. And later, that's that started affecting me as a little kid, and my mom can not even my mom didn't see that that it was affecting me. And yeah, my parents were young, bro. I've seen a lot, you know. They were young parents. Yeah. So how was your household like? Your parents was like good to you, like you kind of had like a good upbringing, or you uh, saw some things at the household like. My my parents tried their best, man. They they tried they tried their best to to raise me up the best way they they knew how they mm -hmm. to raise me. But I seen a lot a lot of arguments that comes with it when you're young parents. And mm -hmm. you know you wanna you just wanna live life, you know. And um, I had a brother and sister as well, and they they tried their best, man. Yeah. That's all I can say, really. Man, yeah, that's that's tough, especially you know being young, because. Like what you said, like I know from from what I've known, you know, people that have had kids when you know teenagers, sometimes even still in high school, they still 
trying to live their life, but at the same time, it's like now they got responsibilities and and it's not easy responsibility, especially when it comes to having a kid. Like that's that's yeah. hard. And I, I can understand, you know, them trying to live their lives, you know, because they're still young. They're still trying to live life and trying to still, you know, go out. And so I, I can I can see, you know, there's definitely some struggle there, the hardships. Um so you you know, from what I know about you, um, you know, you kinda you know, got into the whole, you know, when you started wiggling, basically, you know, uh, hanging out with the wrong people, I guess. Um, when did that happen? Mm, I want to say, man, around high school is what, what got me is just the deceptions. Mm -hmm. Having money, some sort of girls, jewelry, that's that's kind of what, what, what got a hold of me because I wanted that. Mm -hmm. Growing up, my parents ain't had much. So that kind of put me to where, like, man, I want that stuff. And the people that were around, they were slanging, they were selling drugs. So I got interest in that. Um, growing up, I always felt like I had to prove myself, which later on I'll touch on on how that how that also came into effect with me getting saved. And um, yeah, so just following the deceptions of the streets. Uh, so were, were these people like your age or like like older people? No, yeah, they're they were my age. Their uncles were showing them the game, and that's how they had got oh, okay. on. And so, you know, they started t telling us, like, man, that's how we get money, you know. And the girls, you know, they like guys that got money. Uh, guys no. that got money, they got the chains, you know, and they got the gold chains. Man, I started smoking weed around the ninth grade, too. Okay. So high school is when you started, like, you know, smoking and drinking and all that stuff? Yeah. And it was all because of, like, basically the people you was hanging around with? Yep. Okay, so you like you didn't see that like, in your household or nothing. Like it wasn't until basically the where where you surrounded yourself. Yeah, who I surrounded myself with. Okay, yeah, yeah. Now and I remember, man, like in high, especially high school, man. I think that still happens to this day. You know, where high school is pretty much like it's 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 like a social club type thing where. Who got the best, you know, who got the best gear, the best shoes, and like it's <laughs> you know, popularity, like man, I think that's always been so I think yeah. especially where people like, you know, cause myself, you know, I come, you know, my parents didn't have much, you know, growing up. Like I grew up in an apartment complex and like, you know, pretty pretty poor apartment complex. So like we didn't have much. So I can understand like, you know, seeing people, especially seeing people your age. That got, you know, nice clothes, nice shoes, and especially when they got money. When in high school, you want one. <laughs> yeah. I think that's one thing that, like, definitely comes with the, the what's the word, like, uh, like enticing. Like, you know, it's something that draws the young people where, like, you know, somebody with money, somebody, like, that's going to have, like, you know, some good shoes, some J's and, and stuff like that. I think that definitely will push people to... To, to do crime and to, to get involved into like gang stuff because most of the time the gangs are the ones that are pushing and and you know selling and stuff like that. So was it in high school when you got involved with uh, with the gang stuff? No, so that that came later in high school I was more partying, doing okay. drugs, seeing how they was getting it, getting money and I was just like, man, I got interest in that. I went to freedom ninth grade. But I ended up getting kicked out of there because I had gotten a fight somewhere and I wasn't even living in in, in, in Oakley. So I they booted me out of there. I went to Deer Valley. Good. And um I wanna say that's where everything changed for me. Okay, okay. So when when you got when you started to so in high school, was was there already like uh gang affiliated people in, in high school or was oh, yeah, that all sure. that came there, after? There was already there was already people that so my family's pretty big. And so I knew already knew a lot of people who already were who were in the gangs. I didn't take interest in that really because it it didn't really draw me yet. Yeah, it was just more like with, for the money and the party. Money and party, yeah, and girls. That's yeah. what had my interest. I want to say like it was around tenth, eleventh grade is when I started going to school in Antioch, and mm. it's it's completely different out there. Yeah. Antioch is completely different, you know. It's like there's, there's groups, and if you're not part of the group, you're, you're really nobody. Uh, and so that's where it starts coming in. It's like, man, I, I want to be someone, you know? And that's where it all fall in for me when I was four years old, where that rejection came in from my dad. So I was mm -hmm. always trying to look for 
a so place to belong. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I definitely connect with that too because that was something that I struggled with as, as well. You know, finding a, a, a place of belonging, of an identity, pretty much. Yeah. And so, like you said, like so, you already had. I guess you were kind of. Um, already introduced somewhat to the the gang thing because you said you have family yeah, that was into yeah. it, but it wasn't until like I, like after high school or at the end of high school. I want to say at the end of high school. Okay, and so how did how did that come about? Like you just was already hanging out with people affiliated, or yeah, I was already hanging out with people who are already affiliated, and it was uh, what really had me really get into that more is when I went down when I went to jail. Okay. When I went to county, I touched down in AMOD, and uh, I was programming in there. But when I got out, it was too where, like, I wasn't really, I was hanging out with them, but there was so much other things going on that mm-hmm. I liked money. And so I was more of a hustler. I started yeah. moving, moving white. I got my connection from my cousin, and he started putting me on, and then... I would like go around affiliate because I'm selling, yeah. but I wasn't to where like I'm a, I, I want to start I want to start banging I want to start trip like going out there, going on on missions like that's not yeah. wasn't my interest. You're more for the business, more of the business, yeah. more about the money, and then uh, my friend, man, my friend that's who I was close with, we was getting money together. It was my brother, and yeah. when he got locked up, that's when uh, that's when things got a little crazy. That's when I started moving okay. a little reckless. So now uh, to go a little bit back, um, how so when when you got when you got you know when you went in, how old were you? Man, I was twenty one. Oh, so you was already a dog. So you went to yeah, to jail, jail. Yeah, I went to juvenile though when I was uh, seventeen. I got caught with a handgun, so I went to juvenile. Um, I got I got basically expelled from every school in Antioch, mm. so I couldn't even go to school. So did you go to from Jewy to jail, or you so, went to Jewy, came out, and then went to jail? Yeah, so I went to I went from Jewy, being on house arrest for six months, being on probation for a year, and that kind of calmed me down. But at the same time, like I want to say, it really didn't. Yeah, I think at that point, it just kind of gives you a little bit more, um, I guess, freedom in a way. Cause like you already did it, you know. You've already been through it, so it's like if you do, if you go through it again, it's it's whatever. Yeah. And, and growing up, man, I was used to being in my room, cause I would never listen, and my parents were like strict, like on grounding, uh-huh. and so I'd be in the room, like bro, they granted me for three months one time, and I, I couldn't come out. I had to be in that room. <laughs> when I was able to go out, like, hey, can I go pee? And then they yeah, let me yeah. out. But like they were strict on that, so like when I even went to juvie, it felt like I was in my room because I was just so used to being like. Like in solitary, just because yeah. of being in trouble. Man, yeah, I remember <laughs> my parents would try to ground me, and like it, it, it couldn't stick. <laughs> Especially because, like, I think mostly because, like, my dad was like the 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 mean parent, I guess you could say. And since he was too busy, like he was, you know, working full time and the ministry full time. Uh, like the way that I would get out of being grounded was just hop the fence in the backyard, and then my mom wouldn't even know I'd be gone. But yeah, no, it's 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 a trip, bro. And um, oh yeah, uh, for the people that don't know, you say you was moving white. What does that mean? Oh, uh, coke. Okay, coke. Yeah, because <laughs> the viewers, some of them, <laughs> they might not know what that means, and it's like moving what white, you know, white paper, like. <laughs> So it's it's man. So you said, so you you been to jail. Was that the only time you went to jail when you were twenty one? Yeah. Okay. And then how long you been there? I was in there for not long, two and a half months, and bailed out. Uh, and I fought that case, man, for three years. Oh man! And what was it that you went in for? So I went in for a conspiracy, uh, um, assault on a police officer. And mind you, at the time when I got arrested, I, I was so drunk. I was so drunk, so they got me for conspiracy. And then I saw it on a police officer. Oh wow! So now, yo, where did you you where did you go? West County? Yeah, I went to Mart. I went to Martinez. Okay. And how was that? How was your your experience there? Um, and that's and that's the thing when I when I was in the holding cell waiting, my uncle actually came in. My uncle had got arrested. 
And so he's like, hey, just 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 come to the A mod, come come with the homies in the A mod. And I was like, all right, you know, this is my first down touchdown in county. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna go to A mod. Went to A mod, and man, I seen a bunch of people from school that I hadn't seen in so many so many years because they're 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 in there. So that's that's where we even I felt more comfortable, and I started programming. Oh wow! So now, for those that don't know, programming what, is, what does that mean? So like being active. All right, so you basically just got into the mix. Yes, yeah, sure. same as everybody else. Okay, yeah. So what what was your experience there? Like, you see anything crazy or anything like that, or it's just a simple, just you did your time and got out. Yeah, like I mean, like I tell you, like I was used to being in the room, and it wasn't too bad because. My celly ended up being one of my friends from from outside. So yeah, oh man, yes, yeah, so I guess I guess in a way that 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 made it kind of easier, huh? Yeah, especially like you got your uncle there, you got your your friends that you got already. So it's like it wasn't really no no hardships, I guess you could say, huh? No, nah, not really. The only thing that I was thinking about was I I gotta get money because I also had two kids that I had kids at the time. Oh wow! So yeah, man, they were young. They were, my my son, my daughter was a year, and my son was like nine. He was probably like almost a year. I want to say almost a year. Oh man! Dang, so you went in as a as as a father already? Yeah. Okay. And the one thing that did touch me was I was locked up for, for my Father's Day, and oh, my girl man. had brought the kids to see me, man, and that right there touched me. It really did touch me. And I was yeah. like, dang. You know, and we start saying, you know, hey, God, help help me out in this situation. Yeah. I'll change. But as soon as you get out, it's, it's a little different. Unless <laughs> you get that taste of freedom again. <laughs> so I'm back to Oh, uh, next time, thing. God, next time. So then I guess to, to touch on that, what happened then? So you get released. Then what happens? You continue to go on just living life like how you was? or So I get out. I start working with my biological dad, start doing tower work, start getting money, yeah. but then I'm partying. I'm going, I'm partying with him now. So now, it, instead of it with being your a, dad, with my dad, instead of it being a, a father and son relationship, it's, it's a best friend relationship. Yeah. So then it starts partying still going on. And I'm my, my, my closest friend who I was so close to is locked up at this time. And I'm still in the streets. I got other, other, other friends. I'm out there moving. And this is where I can say I started hanging out more with people who were affiliated, but later on like dropped out. Mm -hmm. So we're just kicking it, we're blowing, and I'm working. I'm working a, a, a job, working ten hours, ten hours a day, and even trying to double up my money that I'm getting from a legit job because I wanted to sell more because I wanted more. I wanted more chains. I wanted a better car. I wanted to always look good, and like if you would have seen me back then, people could tell you like I was always I was always dressed up, I was always good, I always had new uh, shoes. Okay, so you so you were working a legit job while at the same time doing some things on the side. Yeah. Okay, man. And so then I guess what? How long did you do that before like you came to see God? I guess. I did it off and on, bro. Off and on, I went on from 15, 16, like four years. Four years? Four years off and on. Okay. Because I would, I would blow all my money or I was spending with a lot of my partners. I would split it off with them. Um, I'd always buy everything. And I had two kids and I had a girl at home, so I'd take care of there. But then I still, I'd be out. I'd be, I, wouldn't, I was neglecting them. Yeah. I was just spending time with them, always out. And sometimes it leads us to those, those uh, we get in those dark spots because we got, I was like, man, I spent all my money because your partying is going quick. Yeah. Especially when you're doing coke and your partying, man, it's, it's just going. It's going quick. Yeah. And then there was a situation to where, like, I was rock bottom. I was like, I had blew all my money. And, um, yeah, and I started, uh, that's where I started robbing, too. It's, it's just crazy how I, I chose... These past these routes that just put me in a hole. Yeah. So did you ever come to a place or a point in time where you felt like you wanted out or like 
you realize, like coming to the realization, like, man, like what am I doing? Like, am I doing, like, I need to change my life or something? Did you ever come to a point like that? Oh, yeah, plenty, plenty of times, especially when I was, when I was 18. I actually wanted to kill myself, mm -hmm. but I couldn't kill myself because I lost a friend in high school who killed himself. And every time I felt like I wanted to do that to myself, it would remind me of him and I, and I, and I couldn't do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's plenty of times, man. Plenty of times, especially because during those times, because I got kicked out of my parents' house. So when I was uh, 16, 16 year old, that's when that's when that's when I want to say my identity crisis started happening. That's what led to partying to thinking, yeah. oh, I'm gonna be a partier. You know, it feels good at the time. Yeah. But I want to say 17. That's when my parents kicked me out. My parents man. kicked me out. I'm living with my grandmas. And you know how that how that goes. You get to do whatever you want. Yeah. I was just doing whatever I wanted, man. And yeah, there was times where I was in holes where it's like there's no way out. And I always, always, always kept hearing like the mercies for the week, mercies for the week. And on my own strength, I would, I would fight it through. Yeah. And then I, I start doing good, and then boom, I'm back again in a hole. The same cycle is just coming up, partying, blowing my money. Like it just it kept repeating. No matter where in life I got, it always repeat. Mm -hmm. So when I had kids, I went to jail, I got out, I started doing good, then I started giving back again, mm -hmm. and then I came back to the pit again, um, I got no money again, and got out, did good, and it was just that constant cycle that I was stuck in. Yeah. Man, that's crazy. So then, like, I guess the question would be, like, what then led you to, to come to seek God? So... During during the time when uh, I got saved, and so I got saved two years ago, yeah. going on two years, and so I got saved, man. When really when my when my cousin had got killed, that sent me to a spiral. So I want to go a year a year before the two years I got saved, I had got my own apartment where I'm partying, we're having parties every weekend, and I'm doing a lot of coke, sipping a lot of lean, chilling with my friends, just just going through it blowing running through money and um it was already a battle of the mind then i was already going through so much because yeah. i felt like i should have been somewhere farther in life than i am right now yeah. but then i i couldn't stop it's that cycle i couldn't break and um, when i found out my cousin got killed my cousin followed my steps he looked up to me and he was living in the streets because he he didn't want to be obedient he didn't want to follow rules Oh, so he was a cousin younger than you. Yeah, he was a cousin younger than me. And uh, he got killed in Pittsburgh. And that's what, like, right, right there is just sent me in a spiral because I'm going to be here living a lifestyle of, like, oh, I'm a stepper. I'm, I'm robbing. I'm in burglaries. We're going to parties. I'm selling Xanax as well at the time, too. Yeah. And we would go to parties, and I would sell his hands, and people would pass out, and we're robbing. We're going to the house. Like, we're just wilding. And um, while all this is going on, my cousin seeing all that. And so when he got killed, it just sent me in that spiral, bro. I was already contemplating, like, my friends is calling me, like, what's up, bro? What you about to do? That's, that's your cousin. You a stepper. Like, what's up? You say you talking about this, this, and that. And so it's like my pride. My pride was up there, and I wanted to slide. But at the same time, I, it's like my, I'm seeing my kids. Yeah. And so I'm contemplating, like, Am I going to slide for my pride? Or am I going to be there for my kids? Yeah. And so that went on for like two weeks. When we, when I went to the uh, the funeral, we buried my cousin. I was still thinking, and I had made my mind up, I'm going to slide. I, bought, I went and got strapped up, got ready for the mission that I was going to go on. And the next day when I chose when I was going to do it, that's when everything changed. That's That's when I got sick out the blue. And I, I couldn't walk. I was in so much pain in my stomach. I couldn't walk or eat. I went to the emergency room because I didn't know what was going on. They hooked me up. I'm hooked up to everything. They come back. The blood works fine. And we did a uh, they did an ultrasound. Everything looks fine. They said everything looks good. They're like maybe Man. it's gastritis. And so they're like have bone broth for at least two weeks. And that week was the hardest week ever because the pain got so more intense, so much intense. That that's that's what started leading me to to ask God to forgive me for yeah. the things that I've done because I, I didn't know where else to go. I always knew there's God, and there is a God. Yeah. So I just started asking Him, "Hey, forgive me." 
God, forgive me for anything that I've done. Forgive me for not treating my kids well. And there was a night where it was so bad. I went to emergency in Concord, went to John Muir, hooked me up. Same thing, nothing should be good. There's nothing's coming up. They gave me IVs. Went back home that night. I had a dream. And it, it was God. That's the one thing I could tell you. I never heard the voice of God. But I knew it was God telling me, this is happening to you because you're misleading my kids. Right. I'm talking about my two kids. And I knew it was God. I just knew deep down inside. And when I woke up, I was scared. Like, Dang, he was about to take me out the, out the way because I'm misleading my kids. And so I stopped smoking weed around them. I stopped having my scales and weighing up around them. I stopped playing my trap music around them. And a couple of days later, the pain got so bad to where, where I was going to bed and, and, and I, I couldn't take the pain, but I felt like as if I, if I go to bed right now, I'm about to die. But I still lay down and I go into paralysis. And the only thing I was able to say with, with no effort and ease, God help me. And for like five minutes, uh, I'm getting things yanked out. At that time, I didn't know what that was. I just thought it was like a big old burp. I thought I had like a <laughs> gas trap. And that same night, my best friend had called me. I love you, bro, but I got to share this, bro. It's part of the testimony, my brother. But he We had a little, little technical difficulties with the cameras, bro. <laughs> we back. Yeah, so man, like... Definitely sounds like like God was the one that that put that sickness to stop you to to prevent you from going to a place or becoming a person that He didn't have for you. It's almost like you had like like you said earlier you you had already made up your mind to slide to reta to re retaliate, but then God was like, no, nah, like I got I got other plans for you. So then He put a sickness on you where. Doctors didn't know what happened, like what what you had, like like it was like you, uh, uh, medically speaking, you were fine. Yeah. But yeah, you were feeling like this pain, and like you didn't know what was going on. But that that to me sounds like it was it was like God stepping in before you made something that was gonna ruin your life and 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 mess up the plans that He had for you. Like He already had, um, you know, a path for you to take, and by Him putting you know making you sick, like. That, you know, it led for you to be, you know, delivered from some things and, you know, choosing down that path to where God revealed himself to you and, you know, kind of, I guess, here you are. Yeah. So then how, you say you, you've been, how long you been saved now? Two years. Two years. Man, it's only the beginning. Yeah. Yeah, two years, man. That's It's crazy, too, because you've been saved for two years. You know, you out here in the streets, you out here evangelizing, you out here preaching the gospel, man, like stuff for the Lord. And it's crazy because there's, there's a lot of people, like I've been in the church pretty much my whole life, and I've seen people that be saved for like 10 plus years and never go out, never talk to people about the gospel. Like it'd be, the, it'd be if people in church saved for who knows however many years. But they they not involved. They just you know like they don't they don't want they don't want to move. I guess so. For you to be saved only two years and you out here ministering to people, moving in power, like you know, uh, pray for people for deliverance, for healing, and, and just really allowing God to move in your life. It's pretty much like you kept your promise that you made for him, you know to him about serving them and stuff like that. So it's. It's powerful, bro, because I could tell you, like I said, I've been in church my whole life, and I've been around church people my whole life, and it'd be people 10, 15 years saved, and don't do nothing. Don't move. And it's kind of like what I told, I don't know if you remember uh, on Saturday, this past Saturday, where I was telling the guy, I was like, imagine, imagine if you had the cure for cancer, and you didn't tell nobody. Then what? And he was like, <laughs> I don't know if you remember that. Like I got him because he was he was he was mad. He was mad that we were saying that, you know, we're we're ex this or we're ex that. Yeah. And he's like, no, 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 like I hate that. But it's like, bro, like we out here telling people what God did in our lives. Yeah. And 
You know, like imagine, imagine if someone had the cure for cancer but didn't tell nobody. And it's like, I think that's how, that's how it is with the gospel. Like we hold the cure to what God saved us, where he pulled us out from. And it's like, how can we not? And I think you moving out, like, or like you moving in the streets, like how you moving, it's like you're showing people the cure. You're showing people the way. It's like we're not the ones saving people, but we're the ones that shine the light to where, you know, where to go. Right. So it's, bro, like, you know, I commend you on that. Like, that's that's powerful, bro, because two years to be saved. And, and I mean, two years as of now, yeah. because, I mean, you've been moving since last year. Yeah, two years as of now. Or, or I guess I guess that's going to be the next question. When did you start um, feeling that call to go out to the streets to evangelize? That encounter, when that encounter happened, instantly... The Lord told me to toss everything that I had. I had clothes that I had bought with drug money. I had a lot of weed still. <clears throat> so many bongs, pipes, vaporizers, everything got tossed. Everything got tossed. And I felt this desire to, to go and tell others about what had happened. Mm -hmm. But at that time, I still, I wasn't confident. Like, yeah. I had the compassion, the burning inside to want to go back to the streets to tell them. But then I was just, my, my flesh still was like, uh, I don't know yet. So then I want to say, this, within that six months after that encounter, I was just pressing in. And I had a Bible that I had got from my grandpa. And um, I started reading it, and I started just speaking to God in prayer. Started going, reading the Bible, going to work, come back home. And that's all I would do for that six months. And it's like, it's like he brought me up to speed. Like I just got filled up. I understood what I was reading. And as I got more confident, I just started being obedient to where he, where at my job, he was already telling me to who to pray for. Yeah. And then from there, just the desires got even stronger. Like I just felt just so, so on fire for the Lord because I was so deceived. I was so deceived thinking it was about money. It's about having drugs, women, jewelry to where I kept, I kept, I could have avoided all this hurt if I would have knew who God was. But the thing is, I've never seen anyone go out into the streets to try yeah. to even bring the gospel. So during the whole time of high school and up, I've never seen that. I've never seen it. And so I have this desire, like, man, you know, if someone would have ministered to me, who yeah. knows? It, it could have saved me from all this hurt and pain that I put myself through, all this trauma that I put on myself or others because of the way that I was moving. So that that I had that desire and compassion in me to go out, to because because I always hold on to what if you know someone came across me, yeah, and and laid hands on me and prayed for me, and so that's why that that's that's that compassion that I have to go out and do that now. Yeah, no, that's good, bro. Cause I I'm I'm there. I'm exactly there. Um, that's why I started getting involved um, when I started getting into ministry. Um, I started getting involved with the youth, and part of, part of that was because exactly what you just said. Like, if I recognized that if somebody would have came, somebody like me with my past and and the things that that God you know pulled me through, if somebody like me now would have came to my younger self at that time when I needed somebody, I think I probably would have been saved sooner. And like, you know, avoided, I probably would have avoided some of the hurts and some of the pains that I went through later on if somebody like who I am today would have came to me, you know, at that time. So I, I think, yeah, it's like, it's just that burden, bro. Like, and it's part of like what I always tell people, like what I always like to teach. And it's like, never forget, like never forget of like where God put you from. And I think, I think that's where a lot of Christians fail, that they forget where God pulled them out from. They forget that they used to be addicts. They forget that, you know, they struggle with this or that. It's like now it's like, oh, we living for God, so we 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 holy, you know, we you know, so they live like that. But for me it's like what I love to teach and I with the principle that I live to this day is I will never forget all that pain, all that hurt, the the you know, the ignorance that I had when I was younger and I hold to that. Because I know there's still people, still young people, you know, out there that are going through what I went through. And that's why, like, you know, like I said, I'm, I'm right there with you, bro. Like, that's why I go out. That's kind of where street fishing, you know, was born, was, was birthed from because of that. 
to continue to go out. Like the whole name street fishing is to literally fish in the streets. And like the motto of street fishing is my only mission is soul fishing. Because we out here to fish in the streets. Like, you know, anybody could do ministry within a church. But how many of us can really step out into the streets and, you know, like that's not an easy thing. And and so that's, that's what I'm saying, bro. Like for you to be, you know, two years in, two years of being saved and already in the streets moving like how you moving, bro. Like that's, 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 that's powerful because I can tell you from my experience, I didn't start getting involved into ministry, bro. Until like maybe five years until like after I got saved. Like I was, you know, I, I had, you know, basically, I mean, I was kind of involved, but like not in the outside things. Like I was in, in the church, you know, getting getting involved, but not until five years after being saved. And for you to be already two years in and doing what you're doing, the burden that you have for the people and bro, that's that's powerful, bro. And I, I really do honestly believe that God has a lot more for you because two years in and you move in, allowing God to move and use you like how you doing. Like, bro, I can I can only see bigger and greater things coming for you. And I mean, we talk, you know, we talk, you know, on the side. So like, yeah. I know ex you know, like your future plans. I won't say it on here, but you know, the definitely I believe um, that future thing that you want. I, I definitely feel like God's going to do something big because if you continue to allow, you know, for his will to move like how it is now, even like with you just being two years in and already like, you know, let's hit, you know, like, I, bro, I can already see like God's going to do something big, bro. Like, so just continue, you know, continue to keep doing what you're doing, bro, because what you're doing is, is correct, bro. It's good. It's, it's awesome. Like, you know, just to really, you know, really be out there and, and you know, for those that don't know, like, you know, as of right now, you know, you go out Tuesdays and Thursdays and, you know, you go out with, with, with us on Saturdays. So it's, man, you moving, you moving, bro. So it's, yeah. I'll tell you, bro, I can, I, 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 man, I commend you on that, bro. Like that's, man, I wish I would have got involved in ministry sooner than I did because I didn't realize how much I was missing out. And I was just, you know, I was the type of Christian where I was just filling the pew, you know. I mean, I got involved with, like, music, you know, part of the music ministry. Um, but other than that, like, you know, I was just going to Sundays, going to midweek, and then just going home and just, you know, being normal, a basic Christian, basically. So, I, man, I commend you, bro. Like, that's it's, it's, it's awesome, bro. And, I can and, say it's, it's, it's all God. Uh, it's, it's it's nothing to me, man, and that's that's why I try to tell everybody when I go out. It has nothing. I'm out here. It has nothing to do about me, but about him. Uh, and the scripture that I hold on to, that I'm constantly just always holding on to, is Galatians two twenty, because it's no longer me. Uh, no, Amen, Amen. Uh, what is it? Philippians one twenty one says that. To live for Christ is our, our is our gain. Oh no! If to live for Christ, we live for Christ, and to die is our gain. Yeah, yeah. So it's it's definitely you know we live in we live for him. I tell people all the time, like man, I do what I do because not for me, but because I'm in debt. I'm in debt to what God has done for for me, for what Jesus did on the cross for me. I'm, my life is indebted to Him, so therefore I move, I live my life. You know, for him and not for my own thing, my own desires and my own, you know, my own wants. Right. And I think that's how, that's how, you know, I think that's why we connect a lot because we have a lot of similarities in that. And, you know, so it's, it's powerful, bro. It's powerful. And so I guess, you know what, I guess one of the questions before we end, um, if you can say, I guess, what's, what's something about evangelism that, that, I guess you could say, like, you, you love about evangelism. That's something that's just, like, man, this is it. This is my call. I would say I feel comfortable. Yeah. I, I feel like, because as, as coming up, when I was doing everything that I was doing, I was always in the streets. I was always out. I was always out there. And I was always a person that I could talk to other people. Like, it wasn't hard to spark up a conversation. And so now that I'm out here for the Lord, 
I had this compassion. I want everybody to know about what he did because where I was at and how we saw how you touched on on some some believers they they don't remember the things that God pulled them from, but I do because of the battle of the mind that it was so intense yeah. that I didn't think there was no way out. And so when that encounter happened, it, it it really changed so much about the way I thought about everything. I got filled, and when I started reading His Word, I believed what the Scripture was saying. And so now when I go out, I had this fire, this compassion, and just man, it, it's you get joy receiving as you're. You're bringing the gospel to them. And also when we get to pray for them, the joy that comes upon them, you get to see when the enemy flees from them. And it's just, you just get filled with joy. And it's like, man, this this is what I love to do. Yeah. No, nah, man, this, I mean, that's that's definitely, I, I, that's pretty much my my answer too. Whereas like seeing the things, and that's, this is why I tell people, like, I can never go back. I can never go back to the world because we get to see the the, you know, people get touched. And then especially when you start discipling people and like you get people under your wing where like they're in sin and then you get to see the transformation yeah. happen before your eyes. Like, bro, that's that to me is one of the most beautiful things that you could ever experience. And I think it's why we will never go back is because of God allows us to see that and experience that. And it's just, yeah, I'm, I'm right there, man, right there. Um, man, so I guess to end it, um, the last question would be, Let's see. How did I phrase it? Or uh, if you could tell, if you could tell, like, or give an advice to your younger self, what would that be? Man, I would tell myself, don't don't worry about the streets. Don't worry about the streets because I, that's where my mindset was. Yeah, I was so focused about streets, all because it's freedom, the money, the women, and I would I would for surely tell myself like, seek God. Because that's what led me to the streets. I didn't know my identity. Yeah. And it's those crises at like 13, 14, 15 years old. It's like, who am I supposed to be? I know who my mom is. I know who my dad is. But it's like, what? what is there for me? Yeah. My mom did hair. So I'm like, okay, she's a hairstylist. What am I going to be? But at the same time, I'm over here not even pursuing school. I would go, leave, go, leave. And try to find my identity, man, in the way that I wanted to live. And so I for surely would tell myself, seek God, go and seek God. Yeah. And learn more about who he is, because that's how you'll find yourself. Amen. Amen. Well, man, it was it was good having you again, bro. Yeah, thank you for, for being, being the first. Man. man, thank you for being the first episode. And 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 hopefully you know the viewers were blessed by this by this by this episode and you know to God be all the glory we, yeah, we recognize yeah. that for Him is the glory um, and we thank Him for salvation we thank Him for for everything yeah, that He's for done for us and for bringing us out you know out of the darkness and into His light so man for for you guys watching man hope this was a blessing for you guys uh, you know edifying and. You know, build somebody up and hopefully somebody that's that's young or even don't even gotta be young, but somebody in the streets, hopefully this was a blessing and, and and you know, it spoke to your life and you know, we're here to let you know that Jesus loves you, he died on the cross for you, that only through him there's salvation. And if you confess that he is your Lord, that you too shall be saved and you know, there's hope. There's hope that no matter what you're going through right now, there's hope and there's there's life and life more abundant. And that's what Jesus you know, came here to do. So thank you guys for tuning in. God bless you guys. See you guys on the next one. Street fishing. Let's go.